Okay, so in the previous tutorial, we, after installing Bolt and everything, we learned how to make a simple, um, I don't know if they, I guess they call them graphs, um, right? But we made a simple program using this uh, visual scripting um, setup, and we were able to make our um, sphere jump when we pressed the space bar. Right, so now we're going to do something a bit more complex um, to introduce more of the way that this, this continues to function. So um, first, what we're going to want to do at this point is rather than adding more interactivity in terms of ability to move this, because we're going to do that in a separate tutorial, um, what we're going to do is we want this, when it collides with these dominoes, it wants to be, we want it to essentially disappear each one of those dominoes, right? So that we're actually using the collider on this object and the collider on this object um, to uh, do something other than just respond to physics, right? So instead of just knocking it down, we want something to happen in that process. And so, um, and so what we're going to do is we will be using the, right, the sphere collider is what's going to tell us that um, we've had a collision, right? And then there's box colliders or cube colliders, I can't remember what they call them, um, on the dominoes. If I click on one of the dominoes, we can see that, right? So it's a box collider, right? So that collider, right, the interaction of those two things touching each other, it can trigger a physics reaction, but we can do all sorts of other different things with that as well. And so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, there's a couple setup things we need to do to make this work. First, if we just created something, if we just said, hey, anytime this sphere collides with something, it should disappear it, um, what's gonna happen is as soon as it hits this ramp, it will disappear the ramp. As soon as it hits the floor, it'll disappear the floor. And it would also disappear um, or destroy is actually the word we're going to use. It would also destroy these objects if it hit them. But what we want is we only want the dominoes to be destroyed. And so we need a way to tell Unity which objects are okay to destroy and which objects are not okay to destroy. All right. So, um, so what we're going to do is the way that Unity does that is through a system of what are called tags. And tags are basically just a, um, something that says, hey, I'm this kind of object. Um, and then we can make decisions based on knowing what kind of object we've collided with. So to do that, um, first I'm going to have the, I have the sphere selected currently. And what I'm going to do is, you, under here you'll see that we have our sphere object, and this is in every case. And then there's a tag, and it says untagged, and there's this layer that says default. Both of these things are useful. We've already made use of the ground, created a new ground layer in a previous tutorial to make sure that we knew what objects were ground um, in, this, in this world. Um, and the other thing that um, we need to do now is we need to use tags. And specifically, we need to create a tag that is, we're going to call it domino, that basically lets us know if we've that that what objects are dominoes and what are not. Now, no matter what object we have up, we can go ahead and click on this where it says untagged, and we can go down to add tag. Now, you may think, oh, this is going to add a tag to the object I'm working on, but that's not um, how it works. What it does is it brings up this tags and layers um, item in the inspector, and it allows us to add tags. So if I hit the plus sign. Um, I'm going to get this new tag, and I'm just going to type domino in there, right? And I did a capital D. Capitalization will be important because what we're going to be doing is we'll type in a string of characters or the word domino, and we're going to be comparing it to whatever this tag name is. And when we do that, punctuation is important. So make sure if you do a capital D here that when we go further down and we work in the graph, we do a capital D there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. When I do that, it's created this new domino tag. And you'll see there's this one that says removed, and that's because I already had the tag there and I removed it. Um, yours should just say tag zero domino on there if you haven't created any other tags. Okay, so I've got my domino tag. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to my hierarchy. I'm going to select Domino 1 and I'm going to go down and select all the way through Domino 5. So I'm just going to hold down Shift and select. I've got all of those selected. I'm going to come up here and you'll see they say untagged. I'm going to go down, I'm going to click on Domino. Right, so now all of those should have tags that say Domino. So if I click on Domino 1, it says Domino. But if I go back up to my sphere, where right the object I had selected when I created that tag, notice it still says untagged, right? So it, it doesn't update that um, it doesn't update that object when we do this, right? It's only if I actually then go and choose a tag in here, right? And I might want to tag this one as player, um, just because it is our player. Um, and uh, but we might save that for later um, because we will use it because um, eventually we're going to have a a little script as well that's going to have our camera following our character around the screen so we can actually see what we're doing right now right I can't see anything in the game window um, because of the angle I have this camera set to but right eventually it'll be nice to be able to have the player move around the scene and a camera follow it so eventually we'll need that player tag in order to to do that okay so we've got that set up so now it's time to start our scripting so I'm going to make sure I have the sphere selected. I'm going to have this, still have this flow graph up. And I'm going to start creating this new behavior that I want to have happen. So the first thing that I need to do is, um, you know, I'm going to need a collider. And I'm going to need some sort of trigger that causes, that basically starts a chain of re reactions to happen, right? And so the... You know, we had this on keyboard input event, right? That that is the the triggering event um, for this action, and so much like that, we need um, something that relates to this collider. So if I go ahead and right click in space here, and if I type in on, and then just C O L, right? Um, what that's going to do is it's going to pull up on collision exit, on collision stay, and on collision enter, right? And you'll also notice that there's on exit 2D, on, right, there's exit 2D, stay 2D, and enter 2D, right? So there's, there's you know, this is for the 3D collider, um, and this is for if we're, when we work in 2D mode. Um, so for now, right, what are the differences, right? On collision exit means that, right, the object has already hit, and it's really that moment when it separates from the whatever it ran into, right? On collision stay means basically is it still in the collider? Now, if we're doing physics stuff, usually you know it bounces off and it's only on it only touches for a moment. But you can create a collider that has no object, um, and you can set it to just be a trigger. So basically, if your character or the person playing moves into a particular space or zone, then something happens. Right, and so it becomes a trigger, but it's basically like a box of space. And so, if a character walks in there and just hangs out for a certain amount of time, then maybe something different happens. Right, so, um, so that's what the stay is for. But the one we want is enter. Right, that's the moment that we either hit or walk into the collider. So I'm going to go ahead and click on on collision enter, and you'll see that if I select this and I have my graph inspector up, it tells me. Um, all sorts of other information here, which is probably almost impossible to see given how grayed out the text is, which is nice on the eyes, but when you're trying to do a tutorial is not, not awesome. Okay, so, right, the inputs is the game object that's listening for the event. By default, that is the collider that is attached to our um, sphere, right? The outputs, right, we're going to have the trigger, right, which is our flow. This collider this is the collider that we hit, right? So it's the other objects collider, right? So it will be the domino. Um, it's, it basically gives us the dominoes collider to use, which is very, very useful. Um, contacts, and this is kind of cool. It's not something we're gonna use right now, but um, it gives us a list of all the places where the collision occurred. Right. If you were making a game where you threw blobs of sticky things um, at a wall because that's what you wanted to do, I don't know. Um, it could basically say, 
it could give you back information about where those hit. So essentially you could have a target on the wall or maybe it's an archery game or something like that. So you could have a target on the wall and you actually know where each one of those things hit and you can then, you could assign a certain number of points based on that. Right, so there's, um, so that's a really useful thing but we're not gonna use it right now. Impulse, um, basically, right, this is, um, uh, yeah, this is how much energy was transmitted in the collision. There's some relative velocity. And then this collision data object, which is the complete collision data object, right? So we can actually either use this collider um, or we can use this, this data port um, for this collision um, to do this. And we're going to, the way I did it earlier was with this. I'm still learning how to map what... Um, how you would script this um, textually into this, but this seemed to work pretty well. So we're gonna do it that way to start with. Okay, so we've got this. So what we need to do at this point is we need to be able to pull out, um, we want to know um, what the, we need to be able to compare the tag that the domino has with, um, with a string of characters. And so um, we need to figure out how to do that. So if I, if I right click over here and click add unit, um, and I know um, that what I, the, the way that you compare things is through a function called compare tag. So if I type in compare and then tag, okay. So it's game object compare tag. Right, and so um, this is what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And um, what it's gonna want is it wants a game object to be brought in here. And then we need to define what tag this, it, what the name of the tag, we're, what we're trying to compare this to, right? So right now it's set to self. Um, that's not what we want. We want the game object that comes from this collider. Right, if I just try and drag this collider over here, it might work this way. Let's go ahead and just see if we can just straight connect it there um, and, and do this. I have no idea if this is gonna work, if it'll actually just pull the game, ob the game object out of the collider. Um, but let's go ahead and hit D-O-M-I-N-O. -O. Right, I'm just typing domino in here. All right, so that's the tag we're going to be comparing to. Hopefully it should be the same. I'm going to go ahead and link this to here. And um, to start with, I just, want to make, I just want to see if this actually works or if this thing turns red and gives us an error when we go ahead and play this. So let's go ahead and run this. And let's just, I'm not going to touch any keys. I'm just going to let the ball drop. So far, so good. Okay. So, right, nothing happened because we don't, we're not doing anything to this game object. Um, but what's nice is, um, and you'll actually see it says we're colliding with a plane, right? Because the ball's on this surface. So that's what we're currently colliding with. That's pretty great. Okay, so that functions, right? We've got this, we don't know what's coming out of this output though. Um, but what's gonna happen here is we're either going to get a true or a false right, is what this purple dot indicates, right? We're either, either this tag matches or it does not match. And so what, then we need to say, okay, well, what are we gonna do with that information? And what we're gonna do with that information is we're going to try and do something called destroy. And so, um, so we're gonna need to destroy this object. So let's go ahead and right click and click add unit and we're going to say i'm just going to type in des destroy and it's going to think and so what we need is object dot destroy and there's two options here one of them has this is obj comma t and what that means is the two parameters the two input parameters here are the um, what object it is and how long after it gets hit should it be destroyed? And the other option is just um, all it takes is one single input, which is the object, 
and then it destroys it instantaneously. Let's go ahead and use this first option that has the time element as well. And we're just gonna leave time set to zero. And so, um, and so yeah, so let's see here. So let's go ahead and so we're gonna need one more piece. We're gonna need a statement that basically says, well, if this is true, then do this. If this is false, then um, don't, <laughs> don't destroy this object. Right, and so let's go ahead and I'm gonna actually select these two objects up here by clicking and dragging and pull this down here just so I have a little bit more horizontal space on the screen to, to finish this, um, this thing up. So I know this is my end state as I want an object to be destroyed. But what I need is some sort of conditional in here. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say add unit and I'm going to say there's this thing here called controls. If I click on that, there's a whole bunch of different options in here. And these are, um, are, these are the ways that we control what happens and how many times things happen, right? So what we're very, the one that we're interested in is either going to be branch or select. And honestly, um, I'm not familiar with, <laughs> with either of these terms very much. So I'm going to create a branch. Oops. And I accidentally full screen this, which is fine. Right. Okay. So I've got my branch and you'll see how branch works, right? My flow comes in and this is my, this is my, what's called a Boolean, which is a true or false value. Right. So I, so what I need to do is I want to send this in here and I want to send this in here, right? So my flows going through here, but now you'll notice the two outputs on the branch are both flows. There's a true flow and a false flow, right? We don't need to connect anything to the false flow. We only want this when this is true, right? When this tag equals domino, we want to destroy this object. Otherwise, we don't want to do anything to the objects that are that are there. So all we need to do is connect this branch to this object.destroy. And again, we're gonna leave our time set to zero for now. And the last thing we need to do is we need to tell it what object to destroy. And so what we can do is we can come all the way back over here to our collider and we can click and we can create another chain and we can drop this right here on this object. Now, if I've done everything correctly, this should work. And if it doesn't, we'll get an error and then we will figure out how to fix that. All right, so I'm gonna double click to go out of full screen. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole window. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and see what happens. Okay, so this is rolling and rolling and rolling and Oh, so what happened there? What object did I actually destroy? Did I destroy the dominoes? The answer is no, I did not. What I destroyed was I what I've been what I'm destroying is the collider object. So you'll notice instead of being destroyed, they all just fall through the floor. Right? So that's not going to work. It works fine for this compare tag, but it is not working for this object dot destroy. And so I'm going to need one more component in here, one more unit in order to make this function. And what I'm going to need is I'm going to need something that will pull the game object that this collider is attached to out of that object. So if I right click and I just do um, collider, oops, which I spelled wrong. And it so collider dot game object dot get right or get this is the this is what I want so I'm going to go ahead and create this and instead of having this object come here I'm going to right click on that dot to get rid of that that line and I'm going to pull I think this no it's not still running I'm going to go ahead and pull this collider down to here Right, and so now it's going to, what that's gonna do is it's gonna get the game object the collider is attached to, right? So it's basically saying, oh, this collider is attached to the domino one or domino two. And what we're gonna do is then we're gonna feed this game object that it's gotten into this object field here. And so now what should happen 
if everything is right in the world, is these should just disappear rather than falling through the floor. And I don't know why it takes so long to start running, but it does. There we go, right? So now they're disappearing as soon as this object hits them. All right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit pause. All right. So that's the end of this tutorial, um, right? We've actually made this. Actually, it's, it's not the end. Okay. So we've succeeded in making this collision occur. And now what we're going to do is we want some reaction from this sphere when we have this collision happen. And so the next step that we're going to do is each time it hits one of these things, we want to boost the scale of this object a little bit, sort of like it's eating these dominoes and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, so let's go ahead and make that happen. This would be a good time to save our projects just in case something terrible happens and Unity decides to crash. Um, okay, so I've got this. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze these down a little bit closer. And so what we need to do is we're going to be, right, in order to increase the scale, what we need to do is we need to be able to have a value that we're able to, each time this, colli this collision happens, we're able to either add to the current scale or what might work easier is multiply um, some value to the current scale, right? If I say if I multiplied these values by two, right, the thing would be twice as large. And I can tell you already, I mean, we, we should start with that because it's hilarious, but it gets big really, really fast. Um, and so we'll end up using a smaller value. But let's go ahead and start with that. So we're going to need to be able to access and change the... Um, we're going to need to be able, so the steps we're going to need to be able to do is we're going to need to be able to get the current scale, multiply it by some value, and then set the new scale back, right? So those are the things we have to get, modify, and set are the steps that we want to take to do this. And all of that's going to happen based on this collision and specifically if we've collided with a domino, right? So we should be able to have a second um, this flow either come out here. I can't, I don't know if we'll be able to do two flows or if, um, it'll have to come out after, if the game object is destroyed, then, then we do this. Either way, we'll, we'll get it to work. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. So I know that I want to be able to get the transform dot scale. So if I right click, click on add unit and type in transform and just do dot and then I'm going to type in scale and you'll notice that right I don't get um, there isn't just a scale there's a local scale and local scale is what I want right so there's this I'm going to zoom in again sorry so you can read this better um, there's this transform.localScale get, and there's this transform.localScale set, right? So these are two of the things we need. So I'm going to go ahead and create the get unit, and I'm going to, and you'll notice there's no flow input here, right? This is just something that if it if it's connected here, it will get called. That was really confusing for me um, at first, but it works. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and create the transform local scale set as well right now. So I'm going to hit transform dot look and I know it's local scale so I can do LOC and I want to do the set right so this allows me to um, right the only input here is the transform which is set to self right now. Um, in fact I probably don't even need the getter I can probably just use the no I need the getter because we're each time we hit something, it's going to be a different scale. So I've got the get, I've got the set. Notice the set does have a flow arrow in it. Um, and so let's just see, I'm just going to do this as a test to see if both, nope, I can only have, right, these are linear, so I can't branch my flow into two different things. So I'm going to right click that. So that means I can set this to true. And then 
I mean, I probably could have the transform happen first, um, but I'd rather destroy the object and then have this thing grow. Okay, so I've got my set, I've got my get. Now, right, we've, we've talked about this before, this is a vector three object. And, um, and so we're also going to need a variable that is going to control, you know, how we um, modify these objects. And so let's go ahead and um, we can come over to our variables window, wherever it is up here. And we can create a new variable, but let's go ahead and name it. We're gonna call this, I'm gonna call it scale factor. Right, so it's the factor by which we are scaling our object. I'm gonna go ahead and hit plus. And the type is going to be a float, right? It's a floating point number. We're gonna start by setting it to two. And I, I might just say just 2.0, although I don't think that really matters. So let's go ahead and pull that down. Somewhere down here, I failed to click on it. There we go. Okay, so now we've got Right, we've got our two, we've got the, the transform, the current transform, we've got the scale factor. Now we need to combine these two things together. Okay, so we know that we want to multiply this by the values that are in here, right? We actually want to multiply two by the X value, the Y value, and the Z value. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to say, okay, well, we want to multiply and we could come in here and we could click add unit and we could type in molt. Um, and when we do that, right, there's a bunch of different options here, right? There's, um, and we could say, this is maybe the one that we wanna do, but we're not 100% sure. If I hit escape, um, but if I click and just start drawing a wire here and click one more time, um, what happens is it pops up a, it pops up only a list of things that you can do with this, right? With a vector three. And so instead of having all the different multiplies, um, it's got um, this one singular multiplication, right? What's nice is it also kind of tells you what each one does down below. Um, a lot of these, you might look at them and you might be like, what the, what on earth is the dot product or the cross product if you haven't done those types of, ma of maths with, ma with matrices before, or if it's been like, you know, a long, long time since you have. Um, but, you know, all we need to do is multiply right now. Okay, so we've created this multiply. And then what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to create a vector three to add here, because if I just was to drag this up here, it lets me connect it, but it ends up giving me an error. Right. So instead, what we need to do is we need to be able to essentially put this into all three values um, across the board. I don't think, yeah, that doesn't work. I was hoping <laughs> for a second. Um, so what we need to do is we need to create a new vector three that we can add these values into. So if I right click and click add unit and type new space vect, it's, I've got this new vector three option here, and I've got the new vector, what I want is the new vector three X, Y, Z. So I want this, this gives me all the proper outputs. And so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in here. Now note, there is a flow control on this before this will um, function, I believe. I'm gonna go ahead and try it without, and we'll see if I get an error. And if I do, then we will link this into the chain, the flow chain. Um, and if not, then we're not gonna worry about it. So let's go ahead and double click to, oops, double click to get out of this, zoom out. I'm gonna hit play and just see what happens. If it, if it doesn't work, then we will know very quickly. Oh, <laughs> it worked really, really well. Did you see how quickly that sphere became 32 in scale, right? It jumped dramatically fast. Let's go ahead and take the scale factor a variable over here and let's set this to 1.1 instead. And then let's go ahead and play this again. Something to note, um, anytime if you have 
there we go. That's like a much more manageable um, increase in scale. Um, something to note, anytime you have the, the game playing, you can still adjust um, some of the settings over here. Like I could adjust the value of the rigid body or I could adjust the value of this, this variable while this is all in play and functioning. However, when I hit pause, like if I was to say make the mass 200 right now, um, and then I was to go ahead and stop it, you'll notice that it jumps back to whatever it was set at before. So that's something to be very cautious of, is that um, you may change some things in here to your liking while the thing is playing, and then you stop it and it all reverts, right? So just for me, my I always have the habit of stopping it, making the adjustments, and then starting it again. So I try to always stop it when I'm done observing whatever was, you know, maybe going wrong or whatever new behavior I've created. Okay, so now we have created a chunk of uh, a flow graph that starts with a collision. Um, it actually checks to see what game object it's colliding with. And if it's colliding with um, a domino, it will destroy that object. And then rather than say counting, incrementing a score or something like that, it, it actually grows the scale of the object of our player object. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So with that, let's go ahead and tighten this up and then we'll go ahead and make a group um, and label uh, what we've just made. So I'm going to pull these down here. I'm going to pull this down. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this one over. I might stick it up a little bit so we can see this line and we know that these two things aren't actually connected together. Okay. So now that I've done that, um, before I make this group, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I pull jump up a little bit just to get it out of the way so I don't accidentally select anything in there. I'm going to hold down shift, click and drag. Oh, sorry, not shift. <laughs> I'm going to hold down command on Mac, control on Windows, click and drag. And then I'm going to come over to my group graph inspector. I'm going to change the name group to um, uh, let's see, I'm just going to call it domino pickup or something like that. Domino pickup. And I'm going to leave this one in blue, the other one's red. I guess they call this black maybe, but um, you know, we could do like a nice teal or something like that. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. Okay, so now we've got these two, these two sections of this one graph, right? So I've got my jump and I've got my domino pickup, right? And so pretty quickly we're learning how to, how to do these things, right? There's, um, we've used events, um, we've looked at how to pull tags, right? Some control logic. We've specifically talked about branching right now. Um, and, um, yeah, and some other commands that are available in here. And so, right, there's a ton of stuff that we can do. But the idea that I'm trying, I'm hoping to get through is that there is a certain logic to it and there are certain components that, that we need. Um, and ways of thinking about things, right? If you want to change something in here, you always have to, you have to find the component um, that you want to modify a, a value of, and then you just type dot and whatever that value is, right? We've done that with the rigid body, with velocity, and now we've done it with the transform, with our scale, although for whatever reason they call it local scale. I don't know why. Um, and uh, we've also been able to talk about tags and how to create a tag and then how to use tags to make sure your code is, um, <laughs> is precise in the objects that it knows it can interact with in different ways. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial.